All right, uh, last question for you, then I'm going to let you go, man. I always like to end it on a positive note. Uh, I try to end it on a positive note usually. Uh, it's 2023. Can't believe I'm saying that. and It's just crazy that it's already 2023. I'm still trying to get over 2020. Um, but, you know, we have a lot of youth out there, OG Steve, who are headed down a path of destruction. That's the best way to put it. Can you give them some advice from an older G, such as yourself, someone who's seen it all, been through it all, yo, in my mob deep voice. Um, can you give them some words of wisdom to hopefully make it through 2023 and beyond without ending up in a grave or in somebody's prison? I would tell them, like, you know, the most important thing is you got to make sure you're striving and doing something that's going to improve yourself. And, and you and once you improve yourself, you're going to approve the others around you surrounding. Uh, what you think is permanent or important, you know, could be here today and gone tomorrow. Same person you think is a down ass homie might snitch on you or, <laughs> you know, or other things might happen and then boom, they're no longer there and you don't want to, you know, do life for something that cost you 10 seconds. So I would say, you know, if there's any any way you can improve yourself, whether it's going to school, working harder, saving money, doing stuff like that, that's more important than trying to get clout or trying to be cool or jumping into some fad that's not going to last but five minutes. So that's, that's what I would say. I love it, man. I love it. Thank you, uh, Steve, once again. I, I love conversing with you, and, and we got to do it more in 2023, man. We need some some good vibes in this world. You know, it's, shit is crazy out there. It's crazy in New York. It's crazy in L.A. And I, I just believe when two dudes come together. It's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy all around the country. Things are out of control. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, people, people killing each other. People ODing. People acting. You know, mental mental health is, you know, people not taking care of their mental health is a big thing, too. So, you know, you got people that's all a mixture of all three. They're on drugs. They got some mental health problems. And crazy man it's, it's sad it, i mean the homeless situation out here and the mental health situation is exploding in la i'm sure it's like that in new york it goes without saying right yeah it's, it's kind of kind of always been that way in new york too it's uh there's some areas where you might see it more than others but you know it, and it, 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 a big part of it is um the mental health uh, the people that deal with the because you know the people that most of the homeless it's like three groups of people it's it's people that are in the streets because they got a mental problem and they're not taking care of it properly and whatever state resources are doing, they're not basically either keeping this person in a facility because they're Medicaid or whatever isn't paying for it. So, and then you have people on drugs, you know, and they'd rather get high and steal stuff than be in the house and have a normal life. And then you have the, the other, you know, people who just fell on hard times and, they have a hard time because if they, if they try to go to a shelter, they got to deal with some crazy person who might be trying to kill them in the night or a drug addict that might steal all their stuff. So, you know, it's a, you know, once we, once we're able to tackle uh, a better way of dealing with people with uh, mental health issues and drug addiction, you know, we look at it for what it really is and we can actually help the homeless problem as it is because, not only uh, the people that, have, you know, that still have homes to live in are having problems with it, but the actual people that are just down on their luck are having a hard time because, you know, the facility they go to <laughs> to, to try to get, you know, a place to warm to sleep at night is sometimes like going to Rikers Island or L.A. County <laughs> mixed with a mental yeah, hospital. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, so you, do you feel safe? You might sleep outside and sleep in there with somebody trying to, stab you because they think you're a, a tiger or something where they're trying to steal all your stuff for yep. whatever's going on so sad man it's sad dude just um if i if i could if i could cure one problem in this world and i know we have a lot of problems we have cancer we have you know just so many problems if i could cure one thing it would be it would be the mental health problem because i that is just it, it it's 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 so uncontrollable right now and there's not enough professionals my wife is in the field and they just don't have enough professionals to keep up with the growing problem. So if I had a magic wand, that would be my my one thing that I could solve right there. Yeah, well, a lot of what it is is the way the states handle the money. You know, they they get the money from the government and other resources, and then you know we don't know what they're really doing with it. So That's whether it. it's 
whether it's mental health or in people that are incarcerated or even you know, older folks or disabled people in nursing homes, a lot of times they're getting the resources to take care of these people, but they, you know, they, they, they still want to profit off of it. So the people that own it or run it kind of keep the majority of the money. They kind of hire people that are like half the time, you know, stuck in somewhere. So they don't want to be a CO or a CNA or maybe take care of people with mental health issues. And they're kind of like burnt out. And then uh, the person who needs the, the care doesn't really get the care or the person needs to be rehabilitated, you know, coming out of prison, that person might actually be willing to change their life or the poor older person who's disabled and needs help. They don't really get the help that they need. And the guy that's got mental issues is out in the streets, maybe getting hit by a car or stabbing somebody. The guy who in jail and might turn his li- life around, might be suicidal or worried about the CO is going to kill him or you know, the inmates are going to kill him. And the poor person in the nursing home getting beat by the CNA because CNA is angry because she, her wage hasn't gone up in a few years. And instead of blame, blaming her boss, she's blaming, blaming the, uh, the patient who didn't ask to have a stroke or, you know, or, or an aneurysm or get hit by a car. But, you know, it has to go from, like, I would say the, you know, whoever runs the states on down to, to you know, to allocate the money in the right ways instead of it just, you know, being a full profit thing where you know the people that own the mental health home me- me- mental institutions or prisons or nursing homes are making all the profit and then the patients or inmates or whatever you want to say are not getting anything uh adequate and then it doesn't you know the people's grandparents or parents end up dying or somebody doesn't get rehabilitated from prison and then they just go right back into prison and then the guy who woman who needs to be in one of those places longer or get the right medication doesn't get it and they end up hurting themselves or 